Hey y'all, it's Sarah back with another book and wine review for your Tuesday night. Sorry I didn't get to this on Sunday. We just had a lot going on. And I wasn't able to finish the book last week. It's super busy a super busy week. Um, okay, so let's start with the wine tonight. My book takes place in Europe and I really want and in France particularly, and I really want to do a French wine. And the only ones I had were like two California wines and an Italian wine. So I'm like, oh, I'll do the Italian wine. Well, I forgot to put it in the refrigerator, and it's a white. So we are doing a California wine tonight. Although it is my favorite, Pinot Noir. This is called Folly of the Beast. And like I said, it's from California. So let's give it a shot. That's good, but that's kind of like, that's different than normal Pinot Noirs. I'm not like a wine expert. I should probably look some of this crap up before I do this so I could sound a little bit better, but there's something almost earthy, like rubbery in it. That sounds bad. One more time. I don't know what that is. That's not my favorite. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, as I cough it back up. Uh, it's not my favorite, but it's okay. So 2018 Folly of the Beast Pinot Noir. Okay, so let's move on to the book. This week I read The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. It's historical fiction. Let's see, I made some notes. Um, this is a book actually about World War I, which is kind of interesting because a lot of books are about World War II. You don't really hear a lot about World War I. So they kept talking about the Kaiser and stuff, and I, I kept forgetting it was about World War I and thinking, why are they going to talk about Hitler and Nazis? Oh, yeah, it's not World War, World War II. <laughs> I think they were still called Nazis then, but... I don't, I don't remember. Anyway, um, so Kay Quinn is just a historical fiction author. She used to do, like, very old stuff, like Greek things, um, and now she kind of is doing more contemporary-ish stuff, like, from the 20th century, at least. She's written eight novels. Oh, yeah, and she got her bachelor's and her master's degree from Boston College in classical voice, which... I don't really know what that is, but I'm assuming that's some sort of um, singing, for lack of a better word. So I thought that was very odd, but cool. Um, so she's written eight novels in total, and then she's co-authored several other no novels. And another novel that she wrote just recently was called The Huntress, and it's about tracking a Nazi war criminal. They're very women-centered, and the Alice Network is no exception. Okay, so the basic plot, like I said, it's done in uh, World War One. Um women were recruited to be spies. And when you think about it, it's very genius because women aren't necessarily thought they're to be spies. They're not suspected to be spies. They're able to slip through easier. Um, I heard this story the other day about bootleggers and that women would often carry the liquor on their person because there was a law like during the prohibition area in some areas that um, they couldn't search women. So the women would be made to carry the booze. Genius, right? So just like this, spies being women, they don't think that they get through a lot easier. So there's two parallel stories. One is about Evelyn Gardner. Her name is Eve, and she is the actual spy during World War I. She uh, pretends she doesn't know German, although she really does know German, and she gets a job at a restaurant in Lille, France, I think it was, and this is a big German soldier hotspot. So she manages to weasel her way in and get a job, and she just pretends she knows no German, but actually she understands every word they're saying, and she reports back about what she hears. Um, and she ends up having to become the mistress of the restaurateur, um, who she just despises. So, but he gives her a lot of information too. So that, uh, and then she goes and she passes it back on, and the network is called the Alice Network, and that's the name of one of the women, the code name of one of the women, but uh, the kind of head, head up, header, header upper, that's not a word. The head of the Alice <laughs> Network. Um, so it's named after her. Anyway, doesn't matter. Let's move on. The other parallel story is about Charlotte, and her name is, her nickname is Charlie. Um, 30 years after Evelyn, aka Eve, is the spy, and she goes and finds Eve because it's not really clear, but Eve had some connection or, in, or uh, looked into 
her cousin Rose's disappearance. So Charlie, Charlotte, really wants to find her cousin and see if she's died or survived the war or whatever. So she just kind of badgers Eve. And Eve is now an old lady, drunkard, ready to shoot your head off on this Luger that she carries with her all the time. She's quite a character. She's very interesting. So Charlotte convinces her to try to help her find her cousin. And so that kind of story is running along with the story of what actually happened to Eve being a spy in World War I. I really enjoyed the book. Now, at times it was a little long-winded, and I thought there were things that got a little dragging. Um, the book is 500 pages on it, so this is no short book. Eve really fascinated me. I loved the stories about her. It was equal parts adventure, bravery, a little bit of love thrown in there, and there's some really bad torture scenes, you know, probably worse in visual form, but it was pretty bad in this book. Um, it kept you turning pages to see what happens. You just wanted to know what happened to her, what happened to the Alice network, what happened to the other girls in the network. The author was really able to capture the depth of her character, and she wasn't able to do that quite as skillfully with the other characters. She did a good job, but Eve was just, she really focused all her energy on Eve because it really came through. She was a character with incredible depth, and you really were just rooting for her the whole time. So if you like these types of period war pieces, you'll love this book. I don't really like period war pieces. Is that a thing? Period war? I don't know. But war, any of the world wars, just never catches my fancy. But the last couple I've read, I've liked. So maybe I just don't know what I like. I don't know. Um, they mentioned Edith Cavill in the story, and she was in a real spy during the war. So this actually went on. Females were spying. And what was her name? Matahari was another one that I've heard about, but she was actually a spy during the war. And I have some pictures of them, and I'll put them up on my Instagram if you want to look at that later, Wine Loving Bookworm on Instagram. Um, you can also look under Sarah Hampton, you'll find it. Um, and kind of when Matahari was a dancer and later on a courtesan, you know, basically a lady of the night. And then e Edith Cavill was a nurse, and she was kind of listening in on conversations. You kind of put them together, and you get Evelyn Gardner. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and I, I saw a lot of the spies were courtesans. Nice word. Um, so, you know, that's where you're going to get people to tell you what you want to hear, right? Interesting. And the women, the, just the idea of women were genius. They learned how to write things very, very small, wrap them up, and put them on hairpins. That wouldn't work today because who, who the hell wears a hairpin, you know, and then put them in their hair. No one's going to check that. Nobody checks that, you know, or they sew it into their sleeves or into their, you know, petticoats and stuff. So it was just genius and made it even more interesting to realize that this was a real thing that actually happened. Women are the bomb. Am I incorrect on this? These women just really wanted to serve their country. And Eve always had a desire to serve her country during the book. And she couldn't find a way to do it because you had to be male to go to war. So this was her way, and she was very eager and very committed to the cause throughout the book, as you will see. So definitely pick this book up. Great book. Just great. It was recommended to me by my friend Carrie Hardy. So The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. Pick it up. You, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Eve, one of the best characters I've read. So, okay, so that's all for The Alice Network. Next week, I have been, you know, kind of looking I, I belong to a couple groups that say hey what are you watching on netflix or hulu or whatever and one of the things that came up on hbo was the outsider by stephen king um and a lot of people I, well actually there are mixed reviews some people hate it some people think it's boring other people love it i like stephen king so i think i'll like it but i don't know some of his later books like i just read the institute didn't love it i you know better than others but that i mean his old stuff there's no comparison. I mean, come on. Classic Stephen King was at the top of his game. But anyway, I picked this up because the the show is based on it. And I'm going to watch the show too, but I have to read the book first. I'm only a couple pages in. It's already really interesting. Um, so I'm really excited to read this one. So that's the one I'll be reading for you guys next week. And I'll give a review next Sunday. I'm going to Vermont on vacation next week. So I will have a review this Sunday, but I'm going to take a week off. Um, and then I'll be back in two weeks to do the next review. Okay, so the Alice Network, you need to read this, guys, okay? You need to read this. Go get it. Go pick it up. It's really good. From a woman that doesn't necessarily like war stories, spy stories especially, uh, boring, I loved it. 
So pick it up. Folly of the Beast Pinot Noir. Eh. I'm going to do a little bit more research on my wines next time before I just down them. I mean, I don't know. Are you guys interested in that? I don't know. I don't know what to call like the flavors that I'm tasting. So I feel like I should do a little bit more um, research. Let's give it one more shot. I guess it's okay, but to me, it's nothing to write home about. So, all right, guys, that's all for me tonight. I will see you next week when I review Stephen King's latest book. Cheers.